Hi, how's it going? Now, as you know, one of the main projects we're working on is this. This is graphene in concrete, and we're looking at the strength improvement of graphene in concrete. So we've been taking various concrete mixes, adding various percentages of graphene to it, and seeing what we get. And, and we've been getting some really awesome results, actually. Um, one of the results we're getting is sort of 99% strength improvement, but another result we got was 154% strength improvement, which we're over the moon about, obviously. But it occurred to me that every component in this is going to matter. So the type of cement that you use matters, and it does. There, there are various standards for the various grades of cement. Um, the aggregate size that you use is going to matter, true enough. Uh, but one of the things that I kind of never really considered was the type of sand. Now, to me, like everybody else, well, hell, sand is sand. But a friend of mine came in who's a builder to help us actually do these things and walk us through the process of making cement and concrete. And he said that you can't use something called kiln-dried sand. He said, if you try to use kiln-dried sand, it doesn't mix properly. It looks like it mixes, but when you uh, chuck it out on the board, what you get is separation and bleeding. All the sand sinks to the bottom, all the water bleeds out of the mould, and you just can't use it. It's not suitable. And I said, well, why is that? And he said, well, I don't really know, mate. Sorry, I just know that you can't use kiln-dried sand. Now, of course, we're pig ignorant, so we completely ignored this guy's advice. And this is a man who's got 30 years in the building game, and here I am who's made, like, half a dozen blocks, and I think I know better. Anyway, I ignored his advice completely on the use of kiln-dried sand. It turns out it was very, very interesting, because the kiln-dried sand... Uh, it was actually slightly stronger than the normal sand. Because we obviously went to the builder's yard and bought some bags of sand. We bought um, soft sand, silver sand, play sand, sharp sand, kiln sand, and we tried a lot. The kiln sand was just that little bit stronger. And it made no sense to me. I didn't understand. Why was it that you couldn't use kiln sand? Uh, why was it that it was slightly stronger? So, of course, what I did is what I suggest everybody else does is I went to Google Scholar and I typed in um, desert sand, kiln-dried sand, concrete, and got a load of results. And there's been quite a few tests on using um, desert sand, ordinary everyday desert sand that you might dig up from the Gobi or from the Sahara or from the uh, Nevada desert, and try that. And it turns out it doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work, apparently, or the suggestion for that reason, is that sand in the desert gets blown around an awful lot. So it's very round. It's really spherical. Sand that you use uh, for construction is much sharper. And the reason it's got irregular and sharp is it locks together in normal construction. And the reason the um, desert sand and the kiln sand doesn't work is because it's spherical and smooth and outsides of the particle size and it just separates out and lets everything bleed. And I thought, ah, that makes a lot of sense to me. Now, if you think about what we're doing here when we're trying to put graphene into this, we actually want it a bit rounder rather than a bit sharper, so we get the even distribution. So we tried the kiln sand, which is our best approximation. We get a slightly better result. Um, normal desert sand can't be used in construction for those reasons. And it occurred to me that, hell, that's one hell of a test to try. Let's have a go and see if we can take normal desert sand, make a block out of it, test it, and see if it's actually better than other sands, than the normal building sand that's used. Now, obviously, I can't visit every desert in the world, which though I would love to, with a baggy filling it with samples of sand. So I really need your help. If you are watching this and you live near a desert and feel like helping, then if you could go out and Dig up a couple of kilos of your local desert sand for me and send it to me. If you want to do that, I'll make these blocks out of that desert sand and we'll test them and see if we can actually take that desert sand and turn it into a usable construction material. Because at the moment, there's an awful lot of desert sand. I think the Sahara has enough sand to cover the entire earth in eight inches of sand. So if we can make this unusable sand into a usable construction material, we can stop doing things like sucking up the Bristol Channel, which is what we do here in the UK, and we can start using something that is considered unusable in a construction industry. But like I say, what I really need is your help. 
if you would like to do that, that would be awesome, so that I could actually test those sounds. Now, I'm going to leave my email address in the description below, and if you feel you can help, if you drop me in line to that email, I'll give you my address. And what I would like is uh, a couple of kilos of your local desert sand with the location of where it was collected and the name of the desert it was collected from. Then I can actually process that, do some tests on the sand, some characterization, make up some blocks, and test the blocks to see if we can actually do that. Anyway, I thought that was interesting. I hope you did too, and I hope that if you do live near a desert and you feel you can help, then you will do that, because that would be absolutely awesome. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I hope it was of interest to you.